morning everybody, happy Monday. Today we are making two new recipes along with just kind of hanging out and spending the day together. And the first recipe that we will make is from 1981. And this one is a peanut butter pie. And I have never seen a peanut butter pie made like this. It's made more like a meringue and like a peanut butter pudding um, is what it sounds like. So that should definitely be interesting. And then we're gonna make a holiday cherry almond glazed pork from 1979. So I will give you guys a better look at that in the papers here in just a little bit. And let's just go on and get this day started. So the first thing I wanna tell you about this holiday pork um, is that it says to slow cook it in the oven at 325 degrees for two to two and a half hours. And then you're gonna make a glaze, you're gonna pour it over, and then you're gonna bake that a little bit to get it all in it. And you wanna make sure that you're basting it often in that like 30 minutes that it cooks <laughs> from what I read. Well, I need my oven to be free today. So, cause I'm making other stuff too. So instead I went ahead and I put my, my roast here. Let me turn on the light so you guys can maybe see. So I went ahead and put my roast in the crock pot here. I've got it cooking on low all day long and I could just turn on the light in here. And, um, that's what I'm doing instead of slow cooking it actually in the oven. And then I will still take it out of the crock pot and put it in a roaster and I'll put the sauce and I'll do everything else. So just know that it does say originally to just slow cook it in the oven and that is an option that you know you could definitely do. I just think it's going to be easier this way. Oh, good time to bring it on there. Okay, so we're going to go on and make this peanut butter pie. And I'm going to show you this paper is very fragile. It is definitely falling apart. Again, this is from 81, so I'll just show you this real quick. It has recipe for liver dumplings, a two-layer salad, a turkey salad, and here is the peanut butter pie that we're going to make. And then this is something in a thrift store. So I am a child of the 80s, so I do love everything 80s. I was born in 75, so I did most of my growing up in the 80s. And I just, I love it. And looking at these papers, a lot of my grandma's papers are from the 80s. You see the hair and you see all the stuff. I had my big old Aquanet do's, you know, same as everybody else. But this pie is different than anything I've ever made because it's almost more like a pudding. I don't know, I've just never made it. But what you need to start with is a baked pie crust. So whether you do store-bought or you do something that you make yourself like I did, you're gonna just want to start with a baked pie crust. Sorry, I'm trying to turn on some lights here. There we go, it's gonna help some. And after your pie crust is done, which I've got mine right here, and then I just made with the extra pie crust some little cinnamon sugar twists there kids like to have those. Um, then you're going to make the crumbly part. It says some peanut butter and powdered sugar and kind of crumble it together. And then you're going to make this like custardy pudding part. So you need to have three eggs separated. So I'm just kind of going over this with you before I even start. So uh, once you make the custard part, you're going to do a layer of the crumbly peanut butter powdered sugar part, this custard, peanut butter custard. Then you're gonna top it with a meringue and some sprinkle the remaining bit of that um, peanut butter brown or peanut butter powdered sugar, <laughs> sprinkle it on top and then bake it brown the meringue. And then I'm gonna put it in the fridge and we'll eat it cold at dessert tonight. So let's go on and make this pie. And to make things easier, I just went ahead and I have separated my eggs, my yolks and my whites. And I'm just gonna set my whites aside over here because I'm not going to need those till we make the meringue. Okay, for the crumbly part on top, it says start with three-fourths cup of powdered sugar. Then a half cup peanut butter. And then it says just stir this together to become a crumbly mixture. I 
get on in here with my hands. Then it says to just set that aside. And we're going to set our pan on medium. To our pan, we want to do two thirds cup of sugar. Two tablespoons. Two tablespoons of butter or margarine. Three tablespoons of cornstarch. One tablespoon of flour. A pinch of salt. A teaspoon of vanilla. Three cups of milk. Three egg yolks beaten. And then we're going to stir this. We want to bring this to just before boiling and try and keep it there for five minutes. Then bring it to a boil and remove from heat. They're laying down watching the prince and me while I'm making pie. I can definitely feel it thickening up now. And now we are boiling, so we're going to go on and remove it from the heat. Now I want to go on and make the meringue to go on top, so I'm going to put my egg whites and just start beating those. what I'm looking at. Those are very soft peaks so it needs to beat a little bit longer. Okay, now we're checking it again and you can see this is called stiff peaks where they stay lifted when you pull them up and it's good and thick. That is a perfect meringue. Now we're going to assemble the pie. It says take three-fourths of this mixture of the crumbled peanut butter mixture and we're going to add that to the bottom of the pie, saving this for the top. And I thought it was a peanut butter custard in the middle, but it looks like it's more of a vanilla. Then we're going to fill it with our pudding slash custard mix. And then the rest of our crumbly peanut butter mixture. And we're going to put this in the oven to just brown the meringue up. Cut 
me. <laughs> She's ready for me to pet on her. She smells something good in the oven. No, puppy, you can eat it. You can eat my wings. No. Nope. <laughs> she wants some cuddles. All right, all right. I think she's done. Hey, do you love that puppy? I'm going to show you where it outside. All she right. She's ready for some cuddles. Pinky, let's go. Pinky, let's go. take Tree outside real quick? I can't right now. Almost, my pie's almost done. Then we can go out and see her play. Oh, he's a meat. Yeah, let her eat. Okay, so here it is out of the oven. This smells divine. I'm going to let it cool. You can see the meringue layer, the pudding layer. I'm going to let this cool and then we're going to put it in the fridge until dessert time. So it is 2 o'clock right now and I know I haven't shown you guys a whole lot, <laughs> but we are busy. We're trying to get everything clean before my mom comes and her birthday is Wednesday, so I'm making some of her favorites that my grandmother used to make. And it is finally not raining. We've had rain for two days. But I wanted to talk to you guys for a minute just about the puppy because so many have asked, are we crazy? A great Dane, do we know what we're talking about? <laughs> he will get when he's grown, or she is grown. I've never had a female dog, I've only had males. Um, but when she gets to be uh, full grown she will on her hind legs be able to stand up and she'll be between six and seven feet tall so they are one of the tallest dogs um, but they are one of the most gentle supposed to be gentle laid back just big old lap dog babies and supposed to be amazing as a family dog I did not buy this dog specifically for Luke it is a family pet so we bought this as a family pet but we wanted to make sure that it also obviously was good with autistic children because we are an autistic household so therefore that is you know a necessity here so that is why we chose Cora and we cannot have made a better decision you guys everybody in this house is so in love with her she is gonna be so spoiled somebody asked where she sleeps she sleeps with Jake um, he's got a great big California King bed and she loves to just cuddle up to him and she started going up the stairs today so she just gets along with everybody she just loves everybody even Luke who really he's not a huge animal lover but she will just lick on him until he'll you know pet on her and show her some affection and then she'll leave him alone so she has so far been just amazing. The kids say they wish she had a little more energy because she's very low energy. Um, she will play for about an hour and then she needs to take a couple hour nap. And then she'll play for about an hour and take a couple hour nap. She is a couple months old. September 11th was her birthday. And um, a couple things that you have to worry about with Great Danes that we know which I have to make her vet visit and she's gonna go get a checkup she has one more shot to get and then at six months she will get her heartwarming and then at a year old we will have her spayed and they are going to do what we call stomach tacking or what we were told to do is stomach tacking because one of the number one killers of Great Danes is that their stomach is actually like flopping around and not attached inside so when they run and they play they say it can like flip around and they will die if that happens within like an hour if they're not an emergency vet so they have to not exercise or be active for an hour after they eat so far that's been not an issue because she eats and then she wants to take a nap so <laughs> she's she is so just perfect she's just amazing so we will have all of that done when she's a year old and other than that she's she's great she is very clumsy she falls all the time last night god love her she was chasing theo around because he was running around the dining room table and she ran into the wall started crying and crying because she hit her shoulder so i picked her up and i got her to calm down and um 
she was fine no limping no anything she's just <laughs> she's just something she's so adorable so we're so happy to share her with you guys she did meet the kittens outside and she gave them a big lick she is totally fine with all the cats and the kittens were not there this morning but they've been with her now for two days and totally fine but for some reason they weren't here this morning so i'm not sure what's going on with that but the mother cat was outside and she does great with her indoor cats so everything is working out perfect Let's put the food on the table Fast as we're able Guests start coming at eight When we're caught in the Christmas rush It's so easy to lose touch With the true meaning of things And what really matters Good girl Just look up She's like, oh, my dream. Okay, now we're going to go on and finish off this pork roast. So we're going to make this glaze that goes on top. Um, this recipe is from 79. And this is the one that we're going to make. It is a holiday cherry almond glazed pork. And you need one jar or one cup of a cherry preserves. Two tablespoons of corn syrup. A fourth cup of a red wine vinegar. A fourth teaspoon of nutmeg. A fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. Third teaspoon of cloves. A third teaspoon of salt. And then we're going to heat this to boiling. All right, and now this is all nice and bubbly. Sorry, my camera battery died, so hopefully I got everything that I put in here together. If not, then I will tell you about it. And we're just gonna pour this over top of our roast and put this back in the oven. I will tell you the smell of that cherry sauce with the cloves and the cinnamon, the fresh nutmeg, smells so much like Christmas or Thanksgiving, but the holidays. I can see why they called it a holiday <laughs> cherry almond glazed pork roast. And look who came back. Is it all focused? Hey, Mom. All of our kitties. Hello. 
Okay, so I just organized the box for Cora's outside things. And I just folded up some sweaters and put them in there. And then I put her bow in there. And then I broke up her treats into little pieces so they'll last longer. And I put them in this bag. And then her leash. And then a clicker for training. Very good. Now we won't be searching everywhere for all her stuff, right? <laughs> Well, I have a few lighting projects. Okay, let's try that again. All right, well, I have a few lighting projects that I'm working on right now. <laughs> the interesting thing is, is with me working during the daytime, it is a challenge to have enough light to do what I need to do uh, as it gets dark. But I'm working back in the barn, and I am working on getting some additional light fixtures up. So yesterday, because it was a little bit better, you can see I've got a couple bulbs up. I actually have to put a uh box on the back one but this had this older fluorescent fixture hanging here it did not give much light because it's about like totally shot um fluorescent lights don't really work that well in super cold temperatures anyway so i am switching these out with some leds those are 150 watt um daylight bulbs they do a phenomenal job lighting up back in here uh, so I can see to finish going through all my stuff. But I have so much to organize and so much to get cleaned and figured out. Um, I have to be able to see. And so I got up, uh, fortunately have a 10 foot ladder. You can see, is there another one up there? Yeah, there it is. So I put in these 350s yesterday as well. Um, and they do a great job kind of lighting up this main area. Uh, hoping tonight to get back under here and do some more wiring. Uh, I got in a couple of electrical boxes and taps and a switch. Um, but to be able to see to work under here, the only thing I had was one four foot light on the other side. Didn't really do the job. Um, tractor's going to need some TLC over the years, so I figure let's go ahead and light it up. So I will be putting six light fixtures underneath this. Uh, basically did a pickup order at Home Depot. I got those parts, uh, the rest of those parts picked up today. And I'll be working on that here in a little bit. And then for the outside, I am going to try, let me see if I can see it down there. Yes, there it is. I'm going to try the solar, uh, they're not very expensive, they're about $30. Um, the solar motion lights, because it gets so dark back in this outside area, uh, my plan is to go ahead and put those solar lights uh, one set here and then I want to put another one back in this little like alcove area back in here with all the branches but the key to it is I have to be able to get up on the roof uh, because the models that I went with actually use a solar panel speaking of lighting the lighting's bad uh, the models I went with actually use a solar panel that is on a cord so you can move the solar panel away from the main motion detector light, which I can do, um, and it makes it perfect for down here, uh, but I have to get the panel where it can get sun, and down in here, it can't get any sun. So, I'll figure that one out, but uh, I'm going to start with the one on the end of the panel because it gets uh, daylight most of the day. on this and the bracket isn't wide enough to straddle. I thought it was but it's not. So I gotta come up with another way. Well, that's in. 
it is what is it it's 459 so I have less than 30 minutes oops so it is 459 and I have less than 30 minutes of daylight left after putting that in that's a bad thing about winter time not enough time to do the work well with the lights on so at any rate I need to clean out this chicken coop because these girls like to come in once the sun goes down and they have a tendency to nest in one spot so I'm gonna get that taken care of and then maybe after dinner I'll go back out work in the barn putting up some more of those light fixtures eh, or maybe I'll wait till tomorrow we'll find out all right so here is the roast and then I just sprinkled some almonds on top and that's what it said to do okay Okay, so that's our dinner tonight. Everything's a huge hit. Everybody loves it all. I highly recommend these recipes. And we will see all of you guys tomorrow night. Thank you guys so much for watching. And have a wonderful night or evening, wherever you are. Bye, everybody. Bye.